G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick tutorial in Dynamo uh, based on a query that a friend had for me recently where they noticed that in Revit when they were working with model groups, some of the elements in the groups had the wrong phase. Um, and it actually is because you can swap out the phase of elements inside model groups even if they're in different instances of that group. So today we're gonna to use Dynamo in order to work around this problem by collecting all the elements in groups and setting their phase properties to be consistent. Um, so today I'll be using Dynamo 2.3 and Revit 2020, uh, but this should work in any versions where the packages I'm using are available. I'm gonna be using data shapes, crumple and spring nodes in order to access some more custom features that aren't available in Revit out of the box. Anyway, let's jump in. So in this particular model, I've just mucked around with these solar panels um, that are in various layers of nested groups. Um, so in this case, we have some rows of panels and inside that each of these is actually a model group as well as an array. Now this is really isn't a very good setup. Um, it's an Autodesk model. So, you know, we see best practices in there all the time. Uh, but in this case, we are gonna access every layer of grouping in here and modify the phase properties of the elements in those groups. Because you might not be aware, but you can actually select elements inside groups and modify things like their mark and their phasing properties. And this can vary per group instance. And this sort of makes sense because sometimes you might wanna use the same group definition on a project, but with different phases or stages of the project applied to it um, to get the most out of that group system. But the problem is that if you do uh, place these groups and modify them in unintentional ways, uh, you will end up with these group instances on the wrong phase um, or maybe the unintended phase. So in this case, we're gonna set their phase demolished to none. And we're also gonna set their phase created to a consistent phase uh, by selecting them. So in this case, I'm gonna turn off my phase filter so I can see all these elements because I wanna be able to see all the ones that have been demolished as well, which won't show up when the phase filter is applied. Okay, so I'm gonna jump straight into Dynamo. Um, in this case, we're gonna be building a very short, simple script that's still very powerful for what we're trying to do. So remember that these elements are technically um, sitting in all sorts of phase combinations right now. So to begin with, I'm gonna get a category by name. I'm gonna be getting the model groups category. So I'm just gonna create a code block and I'm gonna look for model groups. And usually you could do like an all elements of category if you wanted to do every single model group model group in the entire project. But what I actually wanna do here is select model elements of that category um, with a filter applied. So there's a fantastic node from the data shapes package, which is called um, select model elements of category. And this is a brilliant node, um, super helpful. And what it's gonna do is prompt the user to select elements inside the model when it runs. And they're gonna be filtered to only allow you to select elements of that particular category or categories. Um, very useful. So by default, I'm in automatic mode, so it's not gonna run yet. Uh, the moment that I connect a Boolean to this with true to toggle, it's gonna to run. So if I connect this up, it's gonna put me into the Revit model um, with my selection. And notice I can only select very particular things. So I can only select model groups. Very cool. So I'm gonna do a right to left marquee. Because if I do a left to right, I may not necessarily pick up all the groups I'm intending to pick up. So in this case, I'm gonna right to left. I'm gonna finish. And at that point, we should have all of the model groups available. Um, so these are gonna be the elements, that the, the, the groups with the elements we wanna modify. So now we need to get the elements out of those model groups. So again, we're gonna use another custom node, in this case from my package, Crumple. Um, under Revit, uh, in this case, groups, there's a node called group elements. And what this node will do is given a group or list of groups, it will return the elements inside those groups as sublists. We can see that some of these elements don't actually have relevant phase properties. For example, dimensions don't associate to phases. Instead, they associate to the elements they're dimensioning. So we are gonna have some elements we need to not set the phase to. Um, there's a few ways we could do this. One really slow way is to filter out specific categories of elements, but there's a much uh, more efficient way that I'll show you, a little dynamo trick that someone taught me recently. So what I'm gonna do now is just flatten this list. So we're just dealing with all the elements together as one, because we're gonna set them all to a single phase. So we don't need them to be in that list structure anymore. It's not necessary. So one thing we're gonna do first of all, is we're gonna set a parameter to none. We don't want these elements to be demolished. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is go back to my model and I'm just going to turn my filter back on because we now have all these elements selected in Dynamo. I'm going to switch to manual mode. So first of all, we don't want to demolish elements. So how do we select an elements phase to none? Well, we actually need a bit of Python to do this. Um, there's a really great node from the Springs package called element.setParameter to none. And in this case, it's going to just automatically set the parameter of a particular name that we give it to none, which is um, essentially going deeper inside the Revit API and finding the option for none and setting it to that option. So it's a little bit more complicated than just feeding in a piece of text that says none. It's not that simple. Uh, but I'm going to feed in the element and I'm in this case just going to be setting the phase demolished property of these particular elements. And if I run this node, we can see now that the demolition of these elements is now factored out. Every one of these elements should just have a phase created and its phase demolished should be none. So we've already went through that first step that we're dealing with, but the last thing we need to do is set the elements phase. So in this case, I'm going to use a element set parameter my name node, and I'll show you one way we can do this that generates a warning, but technically does still work. And then I'll show you a better way. So if I go to element, and these are the elements we want to set the phase of, um, we're going to be setting in this case the phase created property this time. So I'm going to just use a code block. And finally, we're going to use a select phase node, which comes with Revit. Um, and for now, I'm just going to put them all on the working drawings phase. You could make this an input in Dynamo Player if you want, if you wanted to run this through the player interface. I'm going to set that as the value and just make this a little bit neater. Now, when I run this, it's going to work, but it's going to trigger some warnings. So notice that it all worked. Everything's now on the right phase, but we're going to have some nulls in here because some of these elements, like I said, they don't have um, a phase property to set. So for example, the fourth item in this list, um, in this case, it looks like oh, the fifth item, sorry, is, is a model group. And a model group itself doesn't have a phase. The elements inside the group do. A way to get around this warning triggering, which might freak out your users if they see it, is to use a little special node called function apply. Um, it's a very interesting node in how it behaves. It essentially allows you to send a function backwards to a set of elements. So if I disconnect the element input here, essentially what I have here is an implied function. So I'm, I'm implying there's an element I'm going to feed this through to, but this essentially is a function. From here, this is an argument. So my first argument is going to find the first open input back in my function. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, but it's, it works a little bit like the list map input to some degree. But what it's going to do is run the same function. It's still going to generate nulls, but notice that the function itself doesn't trigger an error. Um, so you get the exact same outcome, uh, but just no error in the process. So sometimes when errors are necessary, uh, the function apply node can be a good way to bypass triggering those errors. Alternatively, you can use things like Python um, to handle the errors, but I find this is a nice quick little trick. Um, in order to sort of bypass that, that challenge. But at this point, we've built a very robust script um, that essentially can take a set of model elements uh, that are model groups, uh, take their elements and set their phase to a desired phase and remove their demolished phase. You could also um, set their demolished phase to a particular phase if you wanted to build the script a little bit differently. Uh, but in most cases, we're rarely demolishing elements in model groups in most cases. So hopefully that's been a useful script and a useful example of a little um, utility script that you might find useful here and there. So I really like um, this, this case because it's a very abstract use for Dynamo. Uh, we use quite a few custom nodes in order to achieve the outcome and it's something that doesn't really have an easy workaround typically in Revit and I'm not aware of any applications that really work this way either. Anyway, there we go. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.